So in an era when others will tell you that it's hopeless and the apocalypse is right around the corner, this is what Elorate social betterment technology has accomplished in the last 10 years. And when you replicate those examples across the rest of international rehab, here's the broad view of unparalleled Narconon expansion with an unending stream of new centers through this decade in Central California's meth lab country, in South Texas to mop up black heroin, in Colorado to clean cocaine snow from the slopes, in Michigan to catch fallout from homegrown cannabis, and another in Louisiana to catch South American imports from the Gulf. There there's another in Vancouver to catch Asian trade, and a second for Canada and Alberta, while to the south it's Costa Rica for South American spillover, and Narcan on Sonora dead center of Mexico's trafficking lanes. It's the same along every other pipeline, from point of purchase in the southern hemisphere to the markets of Asia's golden triangle, from across the white heroin routes to our salvage point for the UK, and our latest Narcan on Castilla for Europe's number one cocaine consumer. A drug rehab center uses mold, lice, and mentally lifting objects as therapy. Now, former patients and employees are speaking out. This unlicensed rehab center is connected to the Church of Scientology, but many parents say they didn't know that. If you're about to send one of your loved ones mm -hmm. to Narconon Arrowhead, should you be concerned for their safety? Absolutely. I would be concerned. I, I, would, I personally would never recommend to anybody that they should send their loved one to Narconon. This is Lucas Catton, the former president of Narconon Arrowhead, a drug rehabilitation center located in a remote area of Oklahoma. Today, state and local investigators removed computers and boxes of evidence from a local drug rehab headquarters that's been the subject of a series of Channel 2 Action News investigations. Investigative reporter Jody Fleischer first broke the story of potential insurance fraud at Narconon, Georgia. And Jody is live there with the impact those search warrants could have. Well, Justin, first I can tell you the video you're about to see is a welcome sight for the dozens of families we've heard from in the past seven months. They are so relieved that investigators are taking these complaints seriously. They want this drug rehab shut down, and they want some of its managers in prison. Police search warrant! Police search warrant! Investigators went in with guns and came out with evidence against Narconon of Georgia. They were not here to make arrests yet, but that could be coming with help from these boxes of documents. Now add in newly opened first step groups into the motherload country of Afghan white, into the source of the hashish legend, and into the center of the black weed trade. And finally, to flank it all, it was drug ed lectures everywhere else, from at-risk generations across the Midwest to the crest of Honolulu's crystal meth wave, at which point it's the cops, the feds, and every other arm of enforcement running with our program. And that's how Narconon opened 121 centers and groups, tripling the size of the network to save 6.3 million people from drugs for this New Year's celebration, 2010. So many boxes of financial paperwork and medical records, investigators had to go rent a U-Haul van to get it back to their office. Nearly two dozen computer hard drives and laptops, those will be important for tracing which employees were responsible for billing. Mary Morton found out Narconon billed her insurance company $166,000 for her daughter Emily, even after the family had already paid in full. It's ridiculous. They're preying upon the most vulnerable of people. Morton was thrilled to hear about Friday's search warrants and that her case could be the one to shut Narconon down. The state already moved to take the facility's license after Channel 2 caught it advertising as a residential facility. It's only licensed for outpatient care.
And if that's the repeating saga of our worldwide network, it's also a story just beginning in the new missions who cut their ribbon just this year. In the south of Russia, east of the Caspian, a bit farther northwest of the Urals, a hundred miles outside Budapest, 50 miles outside Stuttgart, another in Bangor, Maine, another still in Kenya, another yet again in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and one more for the Holy Land in Israel. Combine it all and that's how our mainline missions of SMI placed 5.1 million LRH books and lectures into new public hands for this New Year's 2010. Moreover, when Mexico City next established its first halfway house for prisoner reintegration into society, the operative program was the way to happiness. Take care of yourself, safeguard and improve your environment, be competent, and so on and so on. Now combine it with better than a thousand guards also trained on precept application, and that's how recidivism has now plummeted to unparalleled lows, factually just 1%, and that's also why Rosalba becomes the only civilian commended at the federal prison director's celebration, because the way to happiness is now a rehabilitation program in every Mexico City prison, and yes, that's restoring morals and values on this New Year's Eve 2014. Moreover, as for what emanated out across the world in this golden age, the number of Scientologists on major grade chart services has now increased by no less than 18 times planet-wide. And yes, that's a whole new world for this New Year's Eve 2014. <laughs>